Marmara Belediyeler Birliği'nin çözüm üreten kentler başlığıyla düzenlediği Mar Welcome to Marif 21 organized by Marmara Union of Municipalities. Uh, this program aims at solutions and we host a lot of academics, NGOs, local administrations and international uh, organizations and for three days we're going to discuss different dimensions of the city through their practices. In this regard, it has been a very important forum. So today uh, in the morning, we're going to talk about understanding Turkey uh, with its cities, challenges and opportunities. At the beginning of uh, this this panel, this session, we're going to have an intergenerational um, uh, group of speakers. They have been uh, once upon a time, they have been uh, teachers and students. We have uh, uh, Professor Chalar Keider, uh, a sociology professor from Koch University. For a long time, in 80s, he was in Middle East Technical University, and uh, after that, he was uh, at Bosphorus University. Uh, that is upon his retirement. Uh, he uh, researched into uh, legal sociology, Ottoman sociology, and of course, uh, urban studies. And then uh, we're going to have uh, Professor Fuad Kayman, Director of Istanbul Policy Center. Uh, Sabancı, uh, he's in charge of um, institutionalization at Sabancı University, and he's an IR professor. He's going to talk about democratization, globalization, uh, internationalization, Turkey-EU relations. Uh, he, he has been working in these fields, and recently uh, uh, he's uh, looking into urbanization. And then we will have Professor Benin Loraslı Koyuncu from uh, Hacettepe University's uh, Political Science and Public Administration Department. Uh, he has completed his uh, education in at Bilkent University, and then now he's uh, she's at Hacettepe University. Political thought in Turkey, local politics, violence uh, against women, and urban studies are among her fields of expertise. And then we will have Dr. Fırat Genç from Istanbul Bilgi University's Sociology Department. He has completed the, his PhD uh, at Bosphorus University on modern Turkish history. He has been working on urbanization and for a long time uh, he has been conducting research at Helsinki Citizens Assembly. And he's also a member of uh, editorial member uh, at Istanbul, the IPA Istanbul. Welcome everyone and good morning, as I said. Understanding Turkey through its cities, challenges and opportunities is the title of our panel today. <laughs> we have there has been two books published, uh, one in 2021, uh, the the story of eight cities, um, uh, by uh, Mr. Kayman and Miss Lorasta. Uh, there was a previous work on the cities of Anatolia. So the story of eight cities um, focuses on the new middle classes in Turkey, and uh, it it was published by Metis Publications. And this year, uh, the, the Turkey of the cities uh, uh, published by Çağlar Keder, Fuat Keman, and Frat Genç. In the context of these two books, we're going to run this debate. I'd like to start with uh, Professor Kader, and I'm going to shoot my first question. Understanding Turkey through its cities. Can we take cities as a unit of analysis? Is it possible to understand Turkey and the world through the cities, especially uh, after the globalization started in 80s and the growth started in 2000s? Is it possible to analyze Turkey through the cities? Thank you very much, uh, Ayşe, and I'd like to thank Marmara uh, Municipality Union. If there was no city like Istanbul, uh, we wouldn't really uh, focus on Marmara Municipality Union. I mean, it wouldn't be a, a formation that would attract a lot of attention because As a city, Istanbul is almost a more interesting uh, unit of analysis than Turkey. B 
because there is this thing, you know, in the context of the question that you shot, for a long time, you know, in the time of developmentalism, you know, developmentalism is not really an issue for Turkey, by the way. There is a similar issue across the world. And in the context of the similar issue, there is a development model based on the uh, dominant status of the states. So the state that emerged after the Second World War, a development uh, and growth led by the state, well, it is something actually new throughout the 19th century when capitalism was uh, establishing itself. There was no such case. The states, of course, we had imperialist uh, states and colonialist states, uh, but the development model was not, was never led by the states themselves. After the Second World War, a different world came up uh, in the framework of American hegemony. And in this world, states started playing a key role. But as you know, this model started facing problems. And towards the end of 70s, this model basically collapsed. And the collapse did not just take place uh, on its own, but throughout this period, the states you know the states having an authority on the economy, uh, which would be later framed as neoliberal thought. So according to this, the states should not get involved in such endeavors. Economy should be managed uh, within the market. And globalization is a reflection of this neoliberal thought. Such a reflection means that the market, you know, wherever it finds suitable conditions, uh, the capital flows. You know, the labor of the, the labor uh, is considered to follow the flow of the capital, and this changes the social geography of the states. You may not like social geography. We used to call it human geography back in the time. So uh, the city is coming to the fore is relevant to that. When you look into human geography, more educated, more skilled labor force is unified in certain cities. They are attracted into certain cities. And this is quite normal. So Istanbul has such an attraction. It has always been there, but it's further increased after 1980s. Istanbul did not only go through an economic leap forward uh, after 19, 1980s, the economy started functioning in the world in such a manner. And this allows Istanbul to actualize its economic potential. And it also means uh, a development in the global relations of the city. You know, the the global cities started becoming popular after 1980s. We all started talking about uh, 
global cities, including myself, many urban sociologists started working on how successful Istanbul could be as a global city. Istanbul had a potential and then the conditions started uh, ripening. That was any perspective brought about by Turgut uh, It was basically shaped by neoliberal thought. And the market started uh, functioning in a more free manner uh, during Özal's reign and Istanbul's actualizing its potential, well, it basically started in 1980s. Global cities basically create regions around themselves. So there is a focus that is the global city and they started exercising influence in uh, their vicinity and it doesn't have to be tightly connected I mean, directly connected to the city, but the city has tight connections with this region anyway. So there is a focus being formed. So we're talking about a region that is globalizing as well. So what's the function of the city here? All the networks uh, go through these cities and relations are formed through these cities and the cities are, uh, the cities organize the relations with the global through certain businesses it could be legal companies could be logistics companies ad companies the services that pertain to these businesses you know they don't have to be unified in a certain place the services that exist in Istanbul, they can flow into Bursa, Çanakkale, Çorlu, Tekirdağ, and similar places. So they are uh, being intensified in a global city, but they uh, are they have a fluid nature as well. So there would be no such thing as Marmara a Union of Municipality. Istanbul would basically... Uh, be Istanbul is the place to organize all these relations so so this is this came about after 1980s Istanbul is basically dominating uh, its vicinity, its neighboring region. So the transformation in the world and in Turkey, it affected the human geography in Turkey. The region that surrounds Istanbul, uh, it increased its uh, population and it grew in a rapid manner and it re attracted a skilled and qualified labor force and this came about 
as a result of Istanbul being a very central place. It was a good introduction in the context of Istanbul as a global city. At this point, I'd like to turn to Furat here. In your city, uh, you know, Turkey of cities, yeah, you covered four cities from Anatolia. There is a general look into 12 cities across Anatolia, but four cities were analyzed through a field work. Uh, so you try to extract a part rate of Anatolian cities. You know, uh, in the subtitle, we have the restrictions, uh, opportunities, and conflicts. So from this context, how do you evaluate Anatolian cities? Uh, Professor Kader uh, covered Istanbul. Let's move on with your analysis on Anatolia. Let me let me take it up from where uh, Professor Kader left. He mentioned uh, human geography, and this is an important emphasis because human um, geography pertains to a, sp a space. So for a long time, the globalization discussions were almost irrelevant to geography. And we now we know and we empirically observe that uh, the phenomenon of globalization since 1980s, it doesn't create uh, homogeneous solutions or results across different spaces. So different dynamics in different places create different results. So empirically and theoretically, it is important to have space-specific perspectives. Uh, this is what we looked into when we were working on this book. And we decided that we should look into Anatolian cities, uh, you know, for a long time. The uh, urban studies focused on Istanbul for understandable reasons, for clear reasons. Uh, and beyond this, in locations outside Istanbul, uh, it is important to understand how this shaped up because there's a complex figure, there's a complex landscape, it has its own um, problems and complexities. Let's remember the material context at the beginning of 2000s and the urbanization process. As mentioned by Professor Kader, you know, the concept of national development, developmentalism. Uh, well, for Turkish case, it focused on Istanbul and Marmara region. There were different cities, of course, like Izmir, Adana, but <clears throat> Istanbul attracted the population and capital uh, and, of course, job opportunities. So this new economic model did not um, reduce the importance of Istanbul as a, the dominant city, but um, it started transforming the position of Anatolian cities in this model. As you know, uh, you know, after 1980 coup, export-oriented economic growth model was more labor-intense, and it emphasized the role of SMEs, and SMEs spread across the Anatolian cities. So we're not talking about a deindustrialization that took place in more developed countries, but we can talk about a dislocation of industry. And through the concept of a, a global city, Istanbul uh, started pushing the um, production centers uh, to its periphery and to the, to the rest of Anatolia. The research that we conducted was, <clears throat> which was a qualitative study, by the way, uh, a, a quantitative study, I'm sorry. Uh, when we evaluate the process altogether, we should underline certain points. Some cities in Anatolia, uh, they observed uh, an increase in industrial production and the added value ratio increased uh, in these cities. 
you know, places like Bursa and Eskishehir that have been industrial cities all along are in this group, but we also have new uh, formation of focal cities like Kayseri, Konya, Antep, Denizli, and these cities started increasing their share uh, within the national income and uh, in the share of industrial production uh, and this share started increasing as well and this trend maintained uh, it across 2000s and it's an important trend let me underline once again that Turkey um, did not deindustrialize but uh, we can talk about a changing of position for uh, in the industry so in uh, the spatial um, distribution of labor there has been a change in line with globalization and this mostly took place through SMEs uh, which uh, utilize labor intense areas and they are export oriented this second point is also important we also see a diversification of these cities uh, connection to the rest of the globe like Konya, Denizli and uh, other places uh, we observed a, a tighter connection with the rest of the world and that is a rational result of globalization anyway they have further connected to the rest of the world in Konya for example uh, it is one of the cities that focuses on the um, automotive sub-industry and Gaziantep, for example, focuses on carpentry. They export to North America and Middle Eastern markets. This is what happened across 2000s and Upon saying that, I'd like to add that in many indexes, we see that this slide, this shift, this development in Anatolian cities does not necessarily mean a societal development. You know, TEPOV or uh, competition research institutions study <clears throat> indicate that these cities exhibit problems in development and health services, despite the uh, up upward economic trend this landscape was framed with an Italian Tigers uh, beyond that there is there are other uh, presumptions uh, and one of them is that the economic development of these cities um, are relevant to uh, the competitive capacity that they exhibit. It could be cheap labor, it, ca it could be their position vis-a-vis you know, -vis, uh, the raw material. So the first con concept is about competitiveness. The second presumption is to increase competitiveness. Well, it has been possible with the joint work of the local actors this is another hypothesis and to harmonize the center and periphery in this regard uh, such a harmonization uh, is a prediction of continuance of economic growth our research indicates that under conditions, under such conditions, you know, economic and social developments uh, does not necessarily take place. So we cannot really talk about a linear uh, explanation. In any case, consensus and political harmony at the local level, it does not guarantee the uh, economic development. This is uh, a necessary condition but it obviously is not enough we try to understand this through the concept of urban uh, growth coalition it it's being used uh, since 1970s you know 
the ca the capital actors in a certain locality uh, they should act in consensus with political decision makers to utilize the resources in an effective manner when that happens economic growth takes place in an easier manner this is a reasonable explanation but as i said it's not really valid in every other case in <clears throat> Every uh, every co every such coalition does not necessitate economic growth. We had four cases in our research. One of them is Adana Mersin, and typically it identified that once this coalition cannot be established, there is an uh, obstacle uh, before the economic development. So Adana Mersin is a typical case of that. So s upon the completion of uh, national development, the Chukurova region uh, that is dominated by Adana Mersin, uh, this region is losing its importance. This coalition cannot be established and it has demographic and political reason, uh, reasons. So this regression cannot even be mentioned today. <coughs> but in Konya, a, a, a very different situation is taking place. It's a very corporatist city. Konya is an interesting example, is a success story actually, because for a long time it was an agriculture uh, oriented city. Um, but uh, since 1980s, it turned into export oriented uh, economy uh, driven by SMEs. So it has a lot of cheap labor entry. It is uh, tightly integrated to the international market. And you know, in the uh, mainstream narrative, Konya was uh, considered as a model city rather than uh, a mere economic success. So it is uh, regarded as a model city in terms of capital state relations. But today, we see that because of the conditions that brought success to Konya, there is uh, because of the very same conditions, you know, like SME oriented economy and cheap labor and the institutional structure that is not open to the world. Uh, well, this basically created stagnation because Konya lost its competitiveness at the global scale. And, you know, the capacity of uh, producing the um, sub-industrial material uh, becomes irrelevant because new localities that can produce them cheaper emerged. So in the, in the example of uh, Konya, we can have a situation of upscaling. Um, so Konya, as it lost its competitive power, cannot be uh, the, the uh, institutional ma uh, structure cannot be uh, established uh, the companies should be reorganized their internal structure should be changed you know they should have a new uh, process of manufacture that is based on qualified production rather than cheap labor so with uh, and then Konya should be integrated uh, with uh, more strategic investments and all these steps you know because of the corporatist uh, urban growth coalition be because of the problems in that the necessary steps cannot be taken So uh, we cannot really have successful results, and successful is in brackets here. So the urban development coalitions are a necessity, especially in the context of globalization, uh, but it does not secure economic success. And to understand such possibilities, we should look into the character of such growth coalitions and their internal composition and their structure and this takes us back to our uh, initial point you know 
To understand globalizations, we should look into localizations through their dynamics. This is what we focused on in our study. Thank you very much for this. Uh, I mean, when I was doing introduction in the morning, uh, I said Maruf is giving a lot of place to uh, concrete cases, so it is valuable that we have such concrete cases. Now, we will have Ms. Lorasta, Professor Berin. Hello. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. It's uh, a small mistake. Yes, when you have two last names, yeah, and Lord, that's a hard last name to pronounce. It doesn't matter. Yes, uh, I am sorry. In the story of eight uh, cities, new localization, new locals, and new colors in uh, your book. Now we are saying uh, urbanization but you are saying new locals and, and what do you exactly mean by that is what I want to ask and also our friend has talked about uh, field research in detail but right now you are in a Tubitak project and you are running the project for Turkey's urban areas and sustainable policies it's a project uh, that is run with Sabancı University and Hacettepe University and you are on the field if you would were able to share your experiences your uh, direct uh, observations we will be happy thank you very much uh, to you and to Maru for creating this panel and as a team we are uh, working on this project and uh, this pro to be talk project but uh, as Miss Ayşe also said and uh, Mr. Fuad, uh, when I was an assistant to him, since '96, uh, we have been working together, and this is a great experience for me. I would like to thank him as well. And uh, our uh, studies with it, uh, Professor Pro Fuad is continuing about the cities in Anatolia, and these uh, Anatolian cities uh, research has been printed. 10 years ago and within this 10 years, within the decade, we kept observing the cities and there have been some developments that I will talk about and the story of eight cities is uh, the culmination of uh, that observation and we are referencing the first book and also the Tubitak project that we have been uh, trying to conduct since 2020. Of course, it has been affected by the pandemic, as everything has. Now, what is the new local? This is in Bruce Katz, who is an uh, urbanization expert in the United States, has uh, talked about the multiple actors and the problems that cities have in the 21st century and the philosophy of solution this is an understanding of management so what we are trying to actually uh, tell right here is having multiple actors and having multiple layers and uh, depending on collaboration what we are definitely uh, focusing on is having a collaboration that is focused on solutions and generating new solutions so it has to be pragmatic as it is uh, very in line with Maruf's project uh, and slogans as well as uh, we said uh, these are not uh, local governments because they are not limited to the local government because it's not going to be from the top to bottom it's going to start from the bottom to the top of course the national government uh, shouldn't be uh, forgotten they are very important as well and this uh, localness uh, context and term is not a new thing especially when you take a look at Turkey for example in Friday uh, Professor Ilhan taking has a lot of publishment uh, 
publishing that is that are talking about the importance of this and of course since uh, from 92 to 96 uh, there have been a UN conferences uh, for uh, the local level administrations and so what are we going to do with this local governments and how can we understand the Anatolian cities and what we are going to talk about is uh, there are three points and Professor Chalar also has uh, created a background for us because since the 80s uh, there is a process of uh, neoliberalization of Turkey and this is on happening on top of that and quickly and rapidly uh, free markets are uh, creating uh, are created and uh, are the dominant force right now and we are seeing that uh, these new uh, understandings are focusing on the public good uh, and having some urbanization that is humanitarian and developments that are humanitarian and we are seeing that there are some problems with our current uh, ways and another point is that c cities are seen as only as a, an economic growth area for example Kayseri, Konya, Gaziantep these cities are focusing on economic growth as uh, urbanization but this is a threat for our uh, cities as well of course centralization is uh, the third point and this uh, understanding of the whole city starting from the 2002 and they are increasing the powers of uh, having separation within a city and having an overarching local government for the municipalities as in the name uh, metropolitan municipalities and we are seeing that these are becoming centralized we are in one hand we are trying to localize but on on the other hand we are trying to centralize local government so when we take a look at this context we have three threats as we talked and we have to allow people to be free against these threats and when we take a look at the literature we think that cities should be freeing not prisoners not of course some people are focused on economics but what what we are trying to say is the cities should have more democratic and just uh, systems against the free market economy and centralization of the systems so what is this new local what is what do, do we mean with the new local as i said until now they have some growth indexes and uh, and when we are talking about livable cities we are constantly taking a look at the indexes and these are mostly based on economical values and I definitely don't think these are enough to understand the cities and we sh shouldn't use uh, these uh, understanding that that is focused on consumerism and focused on uh, economic growth mm -hmm. and that's why we care about the new local and uh, we are also going to have to talk about the centralization and uh, also after the elections local elections of 2019 and there have been some uh, administrators appointed to local governments from the uh, central government and this is creating 
a friction between the central government, national government, and local government. There's a conflict between the local and the national because of these actions that have been done, and we are, real, we are realizing these are a worrisome problems for the citizens of these cities. And what we mean by humanitarian urbanization, as I've talked about the literature, what they are prioritizing is not economic growth, but it's the right to join the city. And this is an approach that we also take in our project as well. And we have to take a look at people's uh, participation rights and possibilities in the cities. So city councils, councils are very important, for example, for this. And ideally, these are great structures because those who are usually made up of people living in that city. And of course, within these city council, there are women uh, groups. And what we mean by the new local is a government that sees the inequality and that sees what social justice should be and as Mr. Frod also said why are we focusing Konya, Kayseri, Gaznati, why are there problems? Because these cities have big potential, a big economical potential. Of course Konya for example has uh, stuck for example. But back in July I was in Konya and I think Konya is, uh, Konya's infrastructure and industry and automotive industry in that area is very glad and happy about it. Also, especially Asalsan has started to work in that area and defense industry also entered that area. But still, Konya, when we take a look at it in the from the framework of livable cities, it's not in a good space because when we take a look at the uh, development index in a human point of view it is very low and for example one of uh, the biggest problems is societal gender inequality in Konya, Kayseri, Gaziantep we have also focused this on the book that is the story of eight cities and also our research on the field also showing that and they are unfortunately the worst uh, place for uh, gender equality because women are not able to participate in the city. In the city, the governor, the mayor, or the vice mayors or vice uh, governors, people who are uh, the department heads in the municipalities, when you take a look at all of them, especially in Kayseri, Konya, Gaziantep, you cannot see women. They are not in that dimension. and. These, when we take a look at the, these cities, uh, city councils, unfortunately, it is very sad as well. So there are nine uh, city zones in our project. If we take Adana, Mersin is a one uh, area. Uh, Konya, Kayseri, Izmir, Eskişehir. We have taken a look at these cities, for example, Izmir as a quality of life perspective. Izmir and Eskişehir is in a very well place because they are higher in uh, gender equality indexes and they are also higher in humanistic uh, development indexes. If we are looking for solutions for these problems, we have to fight these inequalities and we were disappointed in the reality because these city councils <coughs> are supposed to be the an important mechanism uh, for decision making. But what we realized is uh, that some of these cities don't even have councils and don't have the women group within the councils. And we realized even if they do have it, there are passive cons councils. If there are some 
if they are about creating some events, these councils are focused on sometimes different projects and different points and they are not doing what we are expecting them to join the decision making and also showing their problems to the decision makers and we where we see the, these councils able to work is in Izmir, Eskişehir. Bursa is not in a good way but Nilüfer municipality is a very good example of and their uh, women's group are very ex active as well what we realize is they are not allowed to be useful and functional unfortunately these women's groups within the councils and I think what we are seeing is the areas that have a uh, societal gender equality they can have the women groups in the councils and I don't know if I'm over my time but I think one of the biggest problems here is of course there are problems in the literatures and having no budget or funding having no space but the core problem that we are seeing right now is these women are uh, working like uh, the women's arms of the municipalities and they are preventing some volunteers as well and we are realizing some political problems uh, arising in these areas and women are not able to participate sometimes and as uh, our professor said on pri uh, Friday if there is going to be change we have to improve the acknowledgement of women in these cities thank you very much sir you continued uh, the subject after fraud and the new local and the importance of local government uh, is what we focused on and you talked about humane development and urbanization let me take a look at uh, Anatolia we are seeing that the freedom of the city is in danger as well for example in the Diyarbakir or Bursa in, in in the inner city or the suburbs you can see that there's a big fight to protect these cities and of course also you are also you had also talked about the conflict between the local and the national government and not understanding the value of local government I would also like to talk to me, Professor Farad uh, right now <clears throat> he has also worked on the uh, story of eight cities and he has published uh, a lot more important literature as well after all these speeches what will be the picture that you will be painting us for Turkey cities thank you Ayşe actually there is a cliche for the final speaker it is both easy and hard and of course about this uh, subject uh, starting from uh, Professor Chawlar there are some academic uh, explanations and we are living in an urbanizing uh, country about 70 percent of the uh, population is in cities and of course there are big problems as everybody uh, has also said most things have been said but uh, it is hard to now add something and what I would like to say is I revised my speech a little bit while listening and these uh, people who are doing these research the common skill and specification of these people who are doing the research are they are looking at it from a local perspective both for the local dynamics and for global dynamics and they are working on these dialectics and that's why in the late uh, lately as
in this uh, Tubitak project uh, for these urbanization uh, work, we had visited uh, Eskişehir and we have met with mayors and loc uh, local mayors. After that, I have went to Canada and I've uh, followed the Canadian elections. Then I had the chance to follow the Germany's elections and. With, with these uh, cultural and global references, I would like to say some st uh, things about uh, these issues, both in a global sense and a local sense, starting from what uh, Mr. Chalar said about Istanbul was very important. He is focusing on Istanbul, on his studies as well, and studying the Istanbul is more is interesting and harder I've experienced that in practice and Istanbul is uh, in a sense a mirror of Turkey because it's a global city and it has it is the hub of uh, <coughs> Turkey there are a lot of people living in Istanbul that is from every corner of Turkey and it shows uh, Turkey's democratic uh, future and of course, it is also important to study the Anatolian cities as well because we can't just focus on Istanbul. We cannot understand the cities, the other cities, if we don't study them. And when we had written this uh, cities book in 2010, and a lot of different academical studies that uh, projects and we did with uh, Tubitak, we tried to combine academics with the politics and Back in 2010, we had uh, taken a look at different uh, cities like uh, Izmir and Gaziantep, which are also uh, in a sizable uh, cities, these are. But this was the first book that is comparing Anatolian cities and not focusing on Istanbul. Another uh, professor sent me letters like uh, you are doing uh, a new perspective and you are not working on Istanbul. Now currently there are a lot more interest for Anatolian cities and transformation of uh, Anatolia. Understanding uh, Turkey in the context of transformation of the nature and we have talked about Anatolian Tigers, now we are talking about a lot of different uh, references in these cities and it is important to study these things and we are continuing it but it is not enough right now and interestingly studying the cities means understanding Turkey because from one side we are talking about a Turkey that is constantly urbanization, increasingly urbanization, urbanizing and we both had to understand Turkey and the problems of Turkey. It is important for that purpose. But what we're at right now is when, when we were doing the study, what we saw was a Turkey that is caring about the nature and climate and the localization. These transformations of these uh, surrounding cities was very important but the, for the last four five years because of the presidency system what we see is Turkey is extremely centralist and this is a blockage for Turkey's urbanization because cities are not capable of making decisions and the center is extremely important at this point this is not just this is not an importance this is a dictation this is that's way that's why when we study the cities what we see is even the cities that have voted for the AKP for the central government national government we are seeing they are suffering as well these city councils are they going to be able to participate in the administration of the city or an executive from parties 
the ruling party is the executive is that person going to be administering the city as also mr chawler also said these neoliberalizations the market economy and the extremely development uh, and infrastructure projects and stuff that are being focused right now and be and the neoliberalization process is affecting the city's developments as well and so there's a duality in here in one in the one hand turkey's I'm going to compare its share with Canada and Germany, but on the other hand, the performance of the cities outside of Istanbul, the localization and uh, development, I have the new local that we are talking about are starting from the local have, uh, level and having uh, global relations for the local governments and having more humanitarian more democratic uh, systems and um, new organizations is what we need but in turkey for the last four or five years it is extremely neoliberal and all ex extremely centralist on one the one hand academically what turkey has to do and what we have to do is there are clues we have to have a different city um, administration and also not just for women but all the neglected groups should be included and allowed to participate when we take a look at it it's not uh, just about neoliberalism it's also uh, we should also we have to focus on gender equality as well these Antolian cities are having the problem of being too male and in the one side there's a new city administration but on the other side there's an extreme centralization so there's a big problem for every city in Turkey but when we take a look at the global developments actually increasingly the importance of cities will continue and the city administrations will, will increase in importance in the future i think all around the world we have to restructure the uh, administrative process to include the local governments more and in line with all these uh, presidency systems and whatnot there was an understanding of uh, administration with one identity and also the uh, administers that have been appointed to some cities in Turkey from the national government this means a dictation and unfortunately these are a big blockage for local government as well so I am all talking about these things as an academic uh, research we are not talking about parties or we are not talking in a political sense this is the way Pol Turkey is at right now of course I am always a positive person so there are new windows being opened as well new for example Eskişehir is a success story it's a small one but it is nonetheless a success story when you go to Eskişehir it is in a smaller uh, sense uh, up till uh, Afyon there is an interest there is an attention zone and there is an <coughs> example in that city but unfortunately in Eskişehir how do they achieve that actually are they in line with other examples we are seeing they are uh, an inclusive administrations they are not in collaborations with NGOs but they are caring about the minorities and they are not just uh, talking about this they are also including them in 
councils and when we talked about the neighborhood uh, mayor they are saying they are visiting these uh, neighborhoods in even in COVID so this is an example uh, how inclusive administration is how important it is of course uh, the extreme centralization in Turkey and extreme neoliberalization in Turkey even if we had a more inclusive administrations I think it will be definitely beneficial and also within this uh, global transformation what we have discussed in the late days the climate change the global warming and focusing on climate and focusing on equality is very important when you take a look at <coughs> Izmir municipality and Eskişehir municipality their action plans are uh, showing that they are taking these climate problems seriously they are creating action plans and quickly I would like to also should uh, talk about the Canadian elections and German elections and as we can see the big focus that they had on the elections the problems about healthcare system the problems about employment and also they were focused on focusing on the climate problems as well in the uh, and they were also one of the most important problems so even the all the uh, parties that are in uh, these parliaments are focusing on these green issues not just the green parties but entire of them resigning the Paris agreement and having uh, the after the American uh, United States elections then Canadian elections and German elections what we realized is the inclusivity should include these other issues as well in unemployment when we talk about an inclusive city we have to focus on climate problems or employment problems or other natural problems have to be taken care of and in the town of Assos uh, discussions uh, regarding the town of Assos uh, Kazda and the coal plants in Black Sea region uh, all the thriving discussions indicate that the public is sensitive on these issues and in Izmir and Eskişehir municipalities uh, people are uh, dealing with uh, the uh, environmental issues and in this regard the new locality is becoming ever more important. Another point is when we look into the cities vis-a-vis um, -vis, uh, centralization, you know, the, uh, the German example and the global studies on this new locality uh, or the Hungarian example, uh, a professor from our policy center attended an important meeting in Budapest um, and between the um, <clears throat> the uh, meeting focused on the relations between the central government and the localities in Hungary and a similar discussion is going on for Brazil and in 2019 uh, the uh, discussions on that heated up in 2019 in Turkey. In Turkey, uh, social democrats are winning the elections. Uh, it has to do with uh, the leadership of the Social Democrat having a serious U-turn because they were not the leading party in Germany. So who are uh, the Hamburg municipal mayor uh, is, an, is an example to that. And just like Professor Kedar said, it's a reference uh, to this, you know, city region. So in an increasing manner, in Turkey, you know, cities' relations with EU and uh, global institutions, it is going to intensify these relations. 
So despite the fact that there are problems uh, between the, the local and central governments, uh, the relations between the local uh, administration and the global institutions uh, are going to increase, and we have seeing indications of that. So in the process of urbanization, uh, this uh, bottom-up dynamic, well, it is not possible uh, to stop this. So this is why, interestingly, you know, in 2019, uh, uh, local elections, the opposition parties won Istanbul, Izmir, and Ankara um, municipalities, just like Eskishehir. So this this connection between the central government and the urban administrations uh, indicate uh, uh, the need for the cities uh, to increase their relations with the global institutions. And this is, uh, again, uh, indicating the importance of the global trends at the local level. I would also like to emphasize that once we all say that you know, in Turkey, it's not just Istanbul, in Anatolian cities as well. We have, uh, we, we needed more academic interest about those cities. It is on the rise, but it's not enough. Because when you look at Turkey from uh, those places, uh, uh, you see the potential and problems at the same time. I'd like to end my speech focusing on Turkey. Within all that I said, you know, in, in a comparative manner, I I follow Germany and Scandinavian countries closely. In historical sense, you know, this strong state tradition that comes from the Ottoman times and the tendency that we have towards centralism. Uh, well, in this context, it's not really going to be easy, what I said. We're not talking about Germany. We're not talking about, about Scandinavian countries. The culture here is uh, 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 requiring state to um, a, a, a leading role State should be strong as a political actor, and maybe we should, maybe we would stay away from that tradition, uh, following and emphasizing the success stories of uh, cities like Istanbul, Izmir, Ankara, especially under the leadership of Ankara, uh, under under the leadership of Mansur Yavaş, the mayor of Ankara. We see good examples, and following. Uh, these cities closely, maybe we can just get out of the context of that strong state tradition and move on with uh, an, uh, an understanding based on equal citizenship. It may be possible, um, uh, as it is a requirement. With this, I'd like to end my speech. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kayman. We talked about the communication and interaction uh, of the cities with EU and other rela other institutions. For example, Eskishehir. Uh, you know, once they uh, they are creating action plans uh, with their districts, and uh, they have the capacity to uh, to do that and execute that actually, uh, and. In the uh, Turkey of cities, uh, under the city of Van, we talked about um, resilient actors. So when we go out into the field in the civil society, we see resilient actors. We see how young people uh, grasp uh, the international framework and uh, how they have a good capacity to conduct uh, their work at the local level. This is something very positive at the local level. So I'd like to give the floor back to Professor Kedar. We need a framework. There are a lot of units working uh, with local administrations, uh, especially with the Metropolitan Law of 63 and 64. Uh, the um, authority field of the cities increased and ex expanded. And now we are dealing with climate issues. and. Uh, we see how SDGs are effective and important. 
from a municipality in Germany uh, or from there to Indonesia or Konya is here in Turkey. So SDGs are pertaining to all these cities in all these countries. So United Nations created a platform, a, a framework basically here with the SDGs and all the uh, governance is being uh, affected by it, you know. So all the cities across the globe, they spend effort to conduct uh, and execute uh, the framework of the SDGs. So international recipes like that, you know, the, regarding the climate uh, crisis, um, food crisis, and COVID, for example, uh, it, these uh, this framework is being ever more important. Uh, so 70% of the world population is going to keep living in the city. So we're expecting new crises as well. So such uh, global uh, recipes or uh, prescriptions uh, could work. This is what we see with the SDGs. Thank you very much once again, Aisha. What Fuat said was very important. So when we look into the cities, you know, going beyond an urban sociologist, we need political sociologists uh, with a more macro perspective. You know, in the political sense, how Turkey grows and develops and how institutions are established, uh, you know, a reference is how it happened in Europe. And in Europe, There's a there's an Orientalist look into Turkey and the Ottoman territories. So, and they emphasize the lack of certain dynamics in this land. In Weberian sociology, for example, uh, there's the concept of autonomy of the cities. In the Ottoman Empire, there has no, there has never been such a case. The Ottomans would never let something like that happen. So this is something that is continuous today. And in Turkey, the autonomy of the cities cannot be considered. And in the local elections of 2019, in the cities dominated by the ruling party, uh, they favored certain candidates, and as uh, Fuad said, we are an in, uh, we are right on an interesting turning point. So, uh, in Turkey, there's always been an antipathy for anti-centralism. Since 1912 elections, every party, every political party that promoted anti-centralism uh, were suppressed. And on the face of periodically emerging uh, opposition, um, there has been a political violence. I'm talking about trustees appointed to municipalities in Turkey. So um, autonomization of the cities and experimenting local democracy, uh, everyone talked about that, Frat and Berlin and Fort, they all talked about that. These experiment, experimentation of democracy at the local level uh, and the repetition, well, they are very important because they have a transformative potential on the nature of central government. Of course, that took place across a long period in Europe. Emergence of the cities, for example, started in 14th century in Europe, and then until the absolutist period, there has been a political experimentation in Europe. and. We have certain institutions that formed in the cities. Uh, they significantly affect the central institutions and pave the way for participatory governance. So how can that, play, that take place in Turkey? 
the city is doing such experimentations and the prescriptions that you mentioned they're not going to make the cities they're not only going to make the cities more livable but they're going to have an effect on the transformation of the central governments and this interpretation could bring bring about something that could be beneficial to everyone so looking into the cities we should not just have the perspective of urban sociologists but we should uh of course, uh, ask the question how we can make the, our cities more livable. But in addition to that, we can also consider how the cities could change the story altogether. There is a question for you coming from Fulia Bayan. In your study, uh, going uh, analyzing the Anatolian cities, did you have a chance to look into the cultural dimension that is the fourth leg of the sustainable development? How would you evaluate the Anatolian cities uh, in this framework? Maybe I could give the floor to Professor Fuat and Berrin, as they know the field uh, in a in a fresh manner. You know, uh, uh, Mr. Fuat has been in the field. Let me just give an indirect answer. You know, cultural policies were not really the basis of our study, so I'm going to give an indirect answer. Four major cases that we uh, covered, Konya, Adana, Mersin, and Van. And uh, all of the, uh, the most important uh, example is, I believe, Izmir. As Professor Chalar mentioned, a historical sociological framework. I mean, in such a context, Izmir is a city that has more mature experimentations. You know, the conservative understanding in the center uh, in Turkey that goes ever more authoritarian, uh, well, it should be regarded in the presence of um, a city like Izmir. So Izmir has uh, a metropolitan management that considers uh, cultural policies important. They have such policies. And uh, so there's a, a strategic uh, orientation that has been crystallized since 1990s. So Izmir has uh, a skilled, it attracts a skilled uh, population with a spending capacity. So the livability of the cities is an important part of that and the access to cultural practices that is demanded by this emerging class for example well there are important factors as well Izmir is trying to take uh, uh, significant steps uh, maybe we can also talk about a Mediterranean Mediterranean Academy um, so there's a perspective uh, in Izmir Mediterranean Academy that tries to harmonize the cultural policies and there's an increasing population in Izmir a lot of artists you know graphic artists architects and we can also talk about a surge that is dominated by them in Izmir so renewal of the spatial uh, elements is also taking place in Izmir but the same population as they grow in the cities they start coming up with uh, uh, different demands culture park is a good example to that for example how can you functionalize uh, refunctionalize the culture park and once once you do that you know you can have uh, you can be disconnected with the overall urban population so in brief I can say that Izmir is uh, maybe the only city that is worth mentioning in terms of the identification of the relation between the center and periphery Izmir is an is some important example and cultural policies are important professor Berrin anything to add as dr. Frat said, we didn't uh, primarily look into cultural policies, uh, but in these um, eight cities, 
uh, in the transformation of Anatolia, we looked into um, a move uh, into uh, theater houses, for example, theater halls. Izmir and Eskişehir uh, come to the fore uh, regarding culture policies. Eskişehir uh, is is important in terms of the concert halls, the theater halls that they have that it has, and. Uh, they are uh, most of the tickets. Uh, most of the time, tickets are sold out uh, in these uh, events. So, Izmir and Eskişehir are leading cities in this regard. Konya has uh, a problematic situation in this regard. They built a big, a large concert hall, and that was a concert by Turkish pianist Fazıl Say, and the tickets were sold out. As you know, Konya is close to the ruling party. Uh, in terms of its electorate, so I had I conducted some interviews in July. Um, uh, well, uh, in interviews, uh, the lack of cultural policies were emphasized. There is an important uh, uh, public institution, but there. There's not much uh, regarding theater halls. Other than that, when we say culture, of course, in the context of Konya, it is focused on Rumi and the, the region that hosts Mevlana, his tomb. It is being renovated and it still has problems, but we should keep Eskşehir in mind as well. Maybe a small addition could be made for eastern and southeastern cities. One, the Arbakur and the other cities were mentioned, uh, and we had a, a field study in the Arbakur in the context of a Tubitak um, project. We can talk about a culture field, not maybe culture policies, because the state appointed trustees are shutting down the theater halls, but the um, uh, the uh, artists that lost their uh, jobs, they are opening their private um, theater halls now. So there is a conflict field, we can say, but in the context of the artwork, there is a living space, there is a resisting space in this regard. So at the local level, important efforts are being spent as well. All right, with this, we came to the end. Thank you very much for your participation. Understanding Turkey through the cities was the title of this session, and we had a very comprehensive discussion. Thank you very much, and I'd like to appreciate the efforts of Marmara uh, Municipalities Union. Have a good day. Bye-bye.